Welcome to part four of our series on uh, MIDI orchestration uh, basic concepts. So in part one we went over the ranges of all the instruments and we did some orchestrations for winds of an, an eight bar example, uh, a short piece that I composed that contains an antecedent and consequent phrase for four measures each. And so we did that for winds. In the second episode, we orchestrated it for brass, uh, the bra brass choir of the orchestra. And then the third, we did the strings. So now in this fourth episode, we're going to focus on combinations of the different colors there. So let's get into that. But before we get into some examples, um, I'm going to kind of go off the cuff here, and um, this is unscripted, so we're just going to kind of see where it takes us. But the first thing I want to talk about is, you remember in the winds we we had the we had it played twice here, um, and oh, actually, sorry, we I just want to talk about um, the example that we did with the deceptive cadence at the end. So instead of go uh, the C sharp dominant to F sharp minor, we went to the D major chord at the end. So let's listen to that because that's going to play into how we're going to orchestrate some of the examples. So let me just play that again for you. Here we go. So that kind of how it's unresolved at the end is going to help us to ch change colors there. So the first example we're going to do is going from winds to strings, but I just wanted to go over that, um, what we did there for that, harmony-wise. So yeah, let's jump into the melody here. So what I was thinking for the first example, I'm just going to kind of... Uh, go off the cuff here, but I was thinking of going from winds to strings. We're going to get deeper into this, but let me just show you an example of of what what we could do here. So coming from this deceptive cadence here. We could come in with the strings. Let's go with this original um, version here, for, just for now. Uh, so, where does it come in here? Now, one thing to note is that on this D major chord that it ends with, the B is going to be a uh, 13, right? The B that, that comes in for the melody here, which is fine, but just so you can hear that harmony here. This is late. Hold on, let me pull this back. right so let's hear it one more time and then I'll, but then I'll, I'm gonna make it a smoother transition
right, so it's a nice color shift there, but I think what could work even better is if we, let me show you here what we're going to do. So we're going to double the, uh, oh wait, let me uh, join this up. Okay, so we're going to double I'm not going to do anything with the violins, we'll keep that the way it is, but but for these harmonies here, right, I'm going to double that, um, the D major chord with the strings, and so we're going to double it, the winds and, and strings are going to both play that D major chord, so it's going to be a nice overlap. So let me first, before I start messing with it here, so if we go up. Data D. All right, so those are the bass and celli here. Um, bring this back a little. This is a pain, but whatever. Actually, easier thing to do would be. I'm just trying to see where get a good voice leading here. So this F sharp, right? Can stay. Let's go. Let me uh, just uh, let's just see what the cello you're doing here. I may not use all of these. Let's look at the viola. All right, so it go the first chord it goes to that B major chord. So the real I'm gonna have here doing a, a D, right? An A. But we need an F sharp. So we have the we have the fifth. So I'm probably gonna use this as second cello actually too. Oh actually you know what it did? I'll take that away. I'm gonna go individually here with this. So this would be A. Right. We have the Chilean bass doing the um, D major chord. So let's put the F in the second cello here, which is good because it comes in with this F here. So, All right. Well, let's just hear the strings for a second. I want to make sure we're good with this because I want to do some stuff dynamically too. Um, so let's solo the strings here. What am I hearing? That's weird. Hold on. Okay. Oops. I want to change 
the dynamics here. I gotta watch the spacing here because so what I was thinking was the strings can fade in here so underneath the winds so let's do that for for all of these here okay pull that back higher maybe okay and the same with the, the cello here and the bass So I, the idea is to have the colors change in that um, with the deceptive cadence there. This looks very strange. Even this out a little. See that? So we hear the strings come in. Gradually. happening here. It's a couple dB. I'm not going to go crazy with balance right now, but it's it's kind of important with this. So let's listen to the whole example. So that works there. Now, let's go back to what we talked about before. Let's 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 talk about just the melody here. And I was thinking of taking just the one one pass through the the melody here and the uh, our little uh, excerpt and. Um, without the deceptive, just go through it once, but like I said with the antecedent part of the phrase, I want to uh, use a different instrument for the for the melody. But not necessarily with the rest of the orchestration. So let's, let's play around with that. So 
So for example, if we continue with this idea of winds and strings, All right, so say we want to, I'm thinking melody, flutes and oboes for the first half. So the first four measures, so let me divide this up here. Right there. I'll show you what we're going to do here. I might bring piccolo in. Well, not yet. So here's the first half of the melody. Okay, so let's, let's move this over here. Okay, so that's the first half, right? I'm going to double that. So these are just unison, right? We're not doing it in octaves. I just want to... Although we may. We, uh, I don't know yet. Let's double this with the uh, oboe. Okay. And let's listen to that color here, oboes and and, and, um, and uh, flutes. Okay, so that's a nice color. Here. It's pretty pretty strong there. That's one option. But underneath that, we're going to have the strings. Um, let's, uh, so let's not worry about this deceptive cadence thing here. Let's go back to this. I'm just going to bring, for now, I'm just going to bring in the, uh, oops, bring in these. Not that, not that. Yeah, I should learn how to cut and paste, but... Oops. I have to move this over. Make sure we're not interfering here. Starting right here. Let me just make sure we get this here. Now at this point, I would bring in the the violins here. So check out this this, this effect here. So uh, the last four measures here. I'm trying to. Let me just. I just it'd be easier to make sure these are on the beat here, just so cutting and pasting purposes. Okay. So, if I bring these in here, so check it out. Yeah. 
shift there. I mean, the volume's a little, we're a little loud with these still. Okay, so let's listen to this. Starts with the winds. Okay, so another thing you could do, um, since we come in with that big strings and octaves there, we could do something like we could double the flute with the piccolo here. Um, let me just make sure. All right, well, I gotta transpose this so. thing you could do, I mean there's so many options here, we're gonna go through a lot, but but say you wanted to, all, all, you wanted to bring winds and strings there, you know, then you could do that, right, halfway through. So this stuff I may have to, oops, and we're not, not gonna worry too much about we're just going to split the notes here. Split the note. Oh, that actually. Okay. So, in other words, you know, we could have something like this. And actually, what I would do is also keep the the um the piccolo in there. So let's check that out. Oh, I forgot we did the uh, um, deceptive cadence here at the end. Let me fix that. Weehoo. Let's go to C sharp. And just change this to F sharp. Uh, let me just check that here. So that makes it really full there, so it's kind of nice. Okay, let's go back to talking about uh, another, something else we could do with the melody here. I keep thinking of starting with horns. I, mean, I think that'd be nice. Horns over strings here. For this melody, right? <clears throat> so it'd have to be lower. We, we may have to approach it a different way here, but well, let's experiment with this. Maybe not the second part. Let's just try doing the first part. 
um, melody for the first part. Because that's nice in the range here. Alright, I need a click here. Can't create a click on the fly. Here we go. Yeah, it has a nice warm warmth to it. Okay, so I'd probably double the horns here. So we have the horns for the beginning. So let's put in the viola, cello, and, and basses here. Let's see what that sounds like here. Use all four horns here for the balance. All right, something this viola thing is bothering me. Try to connect these a little more here. I'm not going to go nuts with this, but 
just trying to, trying to get it in the ballpark. Something about didn't sound connected. That's the thing about samples sometimes. If you think of a real orchestra, like if the players are, you know, attacking the notes at like a millisecond difference here, you're going to get a smoother transition between notes because it's going to blur it kind of. But you know, you can't get that with samples. But, so you have to make sure things are overlapping. That's why also reverb can help. I think, what are we going to here? Yeah, I think we can come up with the reverb a little. We'll give you that nicer. Um, Okay, so I like this. Starting with the horns, we have a warmer tone here for the beginning. And at that point, we could come in with with the uh, strings here. Oops. kind of things that, you know, we can sort of this might be too high well, just wait. I meant what did I do here? So let's bring, this might be too high here for the, actually the, it'll sound nice with the clarinet because it'll be kind of strident or clear. I still think it might be kind of high for the clarinet. We may do... Let's try this octave down. Let's listen to these winds for a second. So we have oboes and clarinets and octaves. Maybe I don't know if I like the oboes here in this instance. So 
So we have both string sections playing. How about flutes? Let's try flutes and and clarinets a little warmer. the brass to stay in with us that would be cool too so but I will leave the trumpets out so we keep we keep the horns bring in the trombones and the, the tuba here for the last part and I think that could be interesting so let's um, let me do a little split here of this split Not too much about we're doing some splitting here well, we'll bring it over and we'll take a look at it. But so let me just copy this. Go to where we want to go, just right here. Paste it. Um, let's let me just listen to the brass here. Make sure we're we're okay with it. So let's hear the whole, that's good, let's hear the whole, uh, what we have here. So we have a lot going on here. We have bringing in the winds at the end, the uh, flutes and clarinet. We didn't do the high octave on the violin because we wanted to bring out those clarinets more. So, and flutes, let's hear. Starts with horns and strings. So see what happened here? When we started off with the horn, it brought us to a whole different place. It made us think differently about the orchestration. So if you start with a melody like that, it can lead you to uh, interesting things here. So let's think of something else here. Let's, let's, um, let's go back to the idea of, uh, remember when we did the uh, string version that had more sort of uh, momentum there, right? So this one here, let me check this out. Yeah, I have an idea with this. Let's um, let's bring this over to our, the new space here. Copy this, and then I'll show you what I'm thinking here. So it has to do with these. See this the viola here, right? Clarinets doubling this. I think that could be nice. So let's let's bring these up. Hopefully we won't have to finagle it too much. So that starts on 104 here. Let me 
show you what what we have here. Oops. See, that's, that's a nice sound here. It gives it a little more. Uh, here, listen with the um, with the viola. Wait, what is this? Okay, starting early here. Hold on a second. a lot. Take it out. Do that. Gives it a roundness. And I actually... Let's bring the winds up a little bit. I was thinking actually bringing the trumpets in for that final four measures there. So let's see what that sounds like. Kind of really beef up that melody there. So let's grab those. The last four measures here. Let me just make sure these are hitting on the beat here. Just for our purposes. Not that. What am I doing? So that's fine. So let's copy this. Throw it in for the last four measures. Starting with strings here in the melody. But I think I want to make this. I mean, this this so this sort of orchestration calls for for a bigger sound. So I think I want to actually double double the melody with the winds. And in this case, we're going to use um, we're going to do this with the piccolo and. So let's bring these guys in here. Mm 
Maybe just maybe we'll start with flutes for the first. flutes in and then we'll bring the oboes in at the end here. So let's try this. Not sure where it starts. Okay. Let me just check out the winds for a second. There's something in the the oboe sounds weird. Why oh, that was like that. Um, also, need this VSL flute. So, what is the bassoon going to do, you ask? I'm thinking actually bringing it in on the second part and maybe even double it with the contra bassoon. So, check this out. Because once again we're going for kind of a big You also notice I'm not really doing, besides the clarinet, we're not doing much percussive stuff in the, we're going to leave that to the strings there. So, contrabassoon. I got to make sure, this may have to be transposed. <laughs> So we want this octave down, so it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty raucous here. Not raucous, but adds a lot of, uh, a lot of depth here. Okay, let's check, let me just check something here with the modulation. Okay, it's pretty, I don't know if I want to go that high with it here. I mean, that's okay, but let's bring it down a tiny bit. Here, let's check out the bassoon and contra bassoon just so you can hear it here. quite a range here in the winds. So we go all the way up to the uh, 
the piccolo. Let's check it out. Okay, I think we're going to bring in some more brass here for a second. Yeah, why not? So we're going all out at the end here. Full orchestra. So that's another idea. And then this would lead you to, you know, we'd add percussion here at the end. Um, I don't want to get into this too much, but, you know, you do like a timpani roll here. Right, so I couldn't hear the click, but Brass, you know, the usher and the brass would do probably uh, a a symbol well too, right? Something like that.
Alright, we're not gonna go nuts with that, but that's something I would do. Let's go back to our... Like I said, this video is gonna be kinda long, but... Let's go back to our idea of... You know, we did with, um, with this here, where we... The deceptive... Eden, it's not that. Let's listen to this again. I feel like almost we could combine this idea with with that um, one we just did here. So let me copy this. So I'm gonna actually. Move this over. Give us some room here. So if I paste this, this is. Let me just, we're going to combine these, but we're going to have to fine tune this thing, but in fact, I don't know what's going on. It's gonna have to move over a measure. Uh, so I have to go over one measure. See, that's cool how that falls in, but like we did before, though. I would bring in you remember how we doubled this here we just for now I'll bring this in here oops copy this I think it's just easier if I um, bring that in for a second. And we just want this, we just want this last, this overlapping chord here, if you remember. That was funny how that matched up. Okay, so that goes here, right?
see so we have a lot of cool colors happening here we're starting with the the winds here the second part of the phrase here. I'm kind of hearing that horn come in. So let's bring that in. I'm going to play it in. But remember we can't go too high with the horn so it's going to be like down. going that high with the horn, so... You know what? A lot of times the horn is not utilized for... It actually can be nice a lower volume. Let's just try it. that end of the let's get a little stronger on that bring some horns in for that. I'm actually going to play them in here. Well, let's just see what we have before I do that. Because I want to kind of keep this video moving here. sure we get that deceptive thing. Well, I think actually... It's fine because it's F sharp A, so... So this is cool because we have winds and brass, which we haven't done yet, without the strings. So check it out. This is, I would go, I'm going to go, uh, in fact, let me take this out for a second. I'm going to go lower with this. See, dynamically, it's kind of rough here. Uh, I'm just doing this very simply here. Um. 
that's even too loud. I don't want to go that high with that air. Something like this. In fact, I probably would just do two horns here. So let's take a look at this other one here. Right? That one with this. Let's listen to the wind, uh, horns, rather. Actually, I might want to put a D in for horn four here. Let me solo the brass. So we have I'd opt for this D here. Okay, let's let's throw that in. Jeez, we all right, so I'd rather go the opposite way. Let me uh what am I doing? I'll bring in the pencil. This will come up. And that'll lead us into the next part, right? Okay, so let's listen to everything here. Check it out. are endless on this, but let's, I had an, an idea, I'm going to try some um, ostinatos, I'm going to start with, so we'll do one more example and then we'll, that'll be it, so let's try um, some ostinatos in the, uh, the flutes for now. I don't even know if this is going to work, but we're going to try it anyway. Here we go. Oops, messed that up, but...
All right, so right there, I kind of didn't do what I wanted to do, but All right, we're going to clean up the freezing here too, but. Oops. One more time here. People keep calling and texting me, so that's my excuse. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think that's okay. Uh, well, I gotta clean it up. That's a, a lot of crap in here. So obviously, I need to quantize this because it's way off. Okay, so it's kind of an open kind of using the fourths and seconds to as, as to establish this that kind of open sound. And I was trying to come up with notes that worked with with the harmonies. You know, when it goes from the B major to the B minor and then the D major to the D minor. So that's why I stuck around sort of F sharp, C sharp area. And then it, it at one point it goes F natural to C natural. Anyway, so this is just an idea. I don't know if it's going to work yet, but let me double the flutes here. So that's fine. Um, so this is going to be kind of a, like the last one, kind of a, a dense, denser orchestration. So I'm going to go kind of big with it, but. So we're going to come back to the winds, but let's. Um, I might go with I may want the violence to double that. Want the violins to double that, maybe, or at least one of uh, maybe violin the uh, second section here. But anyway, for now, let's bring over the. Uh, let's bring over violas, cello, and basses for now, just to see what what this gives us here.
I have to see where this thing starts. But oh, okay. Right after that. Oh, I don't know why I doubled it. I'm just curious how this is going to match up here. No idea. actually pretty cool because we have the 16th notes against the 8th note triplets. So I think I want the strings, I mean the violins, or at least one of the sections to double what the flute is doing here. It's matching up. Okay, so let's let's bring this down to the So let's try doubling it with the second. come back to this because I might do Divisi with Legato, but I think you know, maybe we'll give the melody to the horns, so you know let's hear what the trumpets sound like playing the melody here so let's grab those So much noise. So let's pace that. Here, let's listen to this. that now I think I want to double the melody at the octave with the horns so let's see what we did here 
think we had it here. Right? So. so this first part, sorry, is the melody here. We have to bring in something. Bring the brass down in here in this mix. And the winds up a little bit. So I have to just drag this down for now. You know, I'm not going for. Don't worry about the. Um, it's not going to be perfect uh, MIDI wise, but I don't know why I did. Hold on, undo. Just want to drag it down actually. Oh, I have the key command for that. These have to come down an octave, obviously. I mean, let me just look at something. Okay. Select all. trombones down an octave. Hmm. I actually like these doubled here. I mean if we want this melody to be really big. Yeah, let's do that. Let, let's let's just have an example where we go really big with the melody and the uh, and the horns kind of a Bruckner thing where a lot of doublings at the octave and unison here. So if we go down. So let's listen to uh, trombone and horn. No. 
know, since maybe we'll do Piccolo with us too. Let's, why not? Really bring it out here. Let me just check something here. Here's the winds for a second. I like that. Um, we can also double this with the oboe, but I'm going to hold off on that for a second. Because I want to do, um, I want the clarinets and maybe oboes to do the harmonies here. Let's go back to our original um, thing for a second here. Now, I think I did that here where I had the oboes and clarinets doing the harmonies here. So I might bring this in. And in fact, I'm going to bring in all these winds here from this. Oh, uh, except the flutes. So let's copy these. Cased. Let's just listen to the winds for a second. So the winds aren't doing the melody at all, we're just we're doing this ostinato and we're doing the harmonies and the bass. I'm not going to bring in the contrabass because I think that'll take away from what's going on in the strings, um, the lower part of the strings, so we'll leave that. Now that leaves us with bass, trombone, and tuba. So what I might do is, I don't know, I'm going to bring in the bass here, uh, bring in what they did in our first example here. Let's copy these. I'm just going to see how this pairs up with the, it, it could be good, it, I have to see how it pairs up with the uh, cello and bass in the strings, so. And, but before that, let's let's just check it out with um, let's just listen to the brass. So the wings, winds. My main concern, and this is the kind of thing you have to check, is I want to hear how all the bass instruments are matching up. So let's listen to the bassoons, the tuba, bass, trombone, and the celli and the basses here. So let's let's check it out here.
That's not bad. There's one thing in the horns that I didn't like here. Okay, so let's... It's actually nice, though. What's happening here? Well, you have some... to be before in the um that was from a different example so just gotta change these um bassoons to uh B this one listen to everything. Well, a couple more things to do, maybe. So that works. Now, if you wanted to reinforce this um, rhythm, um, we could bring in some percussion, right? This. too heavy-handed with it. If we wanted to, we could bring in, like I said, bring in some percussion. Let me just solo this and solo the snare drum. Something like that, right? So let me just try to lay that down here. 
need to make sure I have the click here. Just try to lay that in there with the keyboard. It's not easy playing on the keyboard, but. Obviously, we're going to have to go in and eighth note triplet. I mean, if I were doing this, I'd lay in another track and wouldn't quantize it, but for now, for time purposes, we're just going to. Probably put a um, some timpani in there too, but before I do that, so let's hold on. So we're probably gonna put in some rolls here. Do that. some back at this. I might actually continue the rhythm here. I might actually do a variation. Alright, so this is because I'm a percussionist, so I have to kind of. I like that a little contrast there. Also, some flams. For just this. Put another roll in here too. This should be a little louder here. It's a little late or early. I don't know what's going on. Before I make a decision here, you know, 
is the flams are making it feel too on top here. They're too spread out here. So what I'm going to do is snap two ticks. So I'm going to kind of move these over more. Else it feels too early. Right. No, no, no. Okay, that's fine. I'm not going to obsess about that, but let's just check everything out before I add the some timpani or something. Okay, so how would I approach timpani? Well, kind of like we did before, but probably the one and then that quarter note triplet, something like that at the end, right? So, boom, boom, boom. kind of like a, I think of like a march, march kind of kind of vibe here. Mm. So yeah, then it goes to G there, and then C sharp, I think, right? But once again, I think to lay this track down, I think I want to solo this stuff just so we get it tight here. Mm. I just gotta play with it a little bit. Let's uh, just get a feel for it here. put in some rolls at the end here. I'm trying to think how I'm going to incorporate the rolls, but... Mm. Sweet little big low 
we'll see you sure up there. Because we're going to do the roll and get into that, right? Just make sure this is good. I try to limit, I could play all the notes of the bass line with the timpani, but that's kind of not realistic because in an orchestra, timpanist has, you know, at the most like five or six timpani, but usually three or four. So I'm already kind of pushing it here. I got like six or seven notes here, but so we'll keep it at that. So I'm just using basically the roots of the beginnings of each measure. So at the end, the penultimate measure here, I want to do a roll. So we have this dominant thing happening, you know, the C sharp to. So I'll probably do the, this high C sharp here. Actually, you know what, what am I saying? So actually, it res resolves to uh, yeah the F. So we want the F. F sharp, brother. Okay, here we go. Pull it back that far. But I want to check something in some like rogue uh, dynamics here in the timpani, so let's just take a look at this. Be a little hotter at the beginning here. I could come up a little. I see that one there is kind of should be something like that, crescendo kind of. Those are getting lost a little. That especially. Okay, so see, this adds a lot. This reinforces the rhythm of that the cello and the... Oh, actually, we have the also the uh, viola too, right? Well, the viola, that's doing that. That's doing that. Okay, let's hear everything together. Check it out. Oh, take the click out for you. probably tweak that a lot but hopefully that was just kind of off the cuff hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, what you can do there so thanks for watching um, that's the end of the series on uh, 
basic orchestration concepts. I also wanted to mention if please leave uh, some comments on what you'd like to see in uh, future videos and I'll see if I can do that. I got a lot of requests for um, mixing and mastering orchestral and like uh, epic kind of um, trailer music so maybe we'll do something on that talk about reverb and EQ and uh, spatialization you know uh, panning and so that might be a possibility so if, some, if that's something you want to see let me know alright thanks a lot take care